everyone welcome to another youtube video um i haven't uploaded the past couple weeks because i've had loads going on and i haven't had a chance to film anything but because it's um the start of april now i thought it's i need to get a march wrap up up so um i read one two three four five six seven eight nine books in um march and it was quite a good reading month in the in the sense of um ratings I rated quite a lot of them really high so I started off the month finishing off I did start this in February and then I finished off in March A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas and this was absolutely amazing it feels like ages ago since I read this now it took me a little while to get through it because it's a, a chunky one but this is the fourth main book in the Akatar series and I loved this so much I wasn't sure I was going to because this is um this book is based around the a character called Nesta and I didn't like her at all in the first three books. And I I understand why she was like a bad character in the first ones, why she was horrible, but then again I don't at the same time. So I'm not sure but I I like her much more than I did anyway. And I fully enjoyed this book. I just Sarah J. Mars's writing is just amazing. I love the world she creates. Um her books are so easy to get through, they grip me, I love all the characters, I love the storyline. It's just, they're just amazing and I want her to never stop writing, basically. So yeah, 5 out of 5 stars and I would not expect anything less from a Sarah J Maas book. Definitely recommend. The next book I read was a bit of a disappointment. It is Five Survive by Holly Jackson. Um, I was really excited for this because I really enjoyed the Good Girls Guide to Murder series by her. And I did enjoy this, but it just wasn't as gripping as I thought it would be. Um, it was quite slow up until the end point and um, so I only gave this book three stars and it's basically about a group of kids well not kids like teenagers whatever who um, are going on like a road trip and in like this massive RV they get stuck and someone's threatening them and shooting at the RV and stuff and they're just trying to figure out who did it um, like who the person is and who's behind it all and stuff like that so yeah and this book just takes the takes place over eight hours and I did enjoy it, but it wasn't her best work. I definitely preferred the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. But anyway, it's worth a read anyway. It was quite quick, but yeah, just wasn't as good as I was expecting. I also downloaded the Heartstopper Yearbook by Alice Oseman on the Kindle app on my phone. Um, I got it on my phone rather than my Kindle just because um, it's in colour. So I wanted to be able to see the colour, whereas on my Kindle Paperwhite, that's all black and white, and I thought it wouldn't look as good. So... Yeah, that was on Kindle, like one of the daily deals for 99p, so I picked that up because I would, didn't really want the physical copy, so I thought I'd get it on my Kindle and read that because I really enjoyed the Heartstopper graphic novels. And this one was good, but obviously it wasn't as good as the actual graphic novels because there was no storyline. This basically, it went through like how her drawings have changed over the years. So these are some of her like first stories and stuff and it goes through the years of how her drawings have changed, how her art style has changed and I really like that aspect of the book. And there was also like some mini comics and stuff like that. I thought it was going to be a bit longer, like I thought there was going to be more in it. I gave it four stars but, but I didn't really know how to rate it really because I enjoyed it, it was interesting but it just wasn't like, it wasn't you know, it's not a story, so I could, didn't really know how to rate it. So I gave it four stars anyway, because it was enjoyable and it was quite interesting seeing like her, um, how her drawings started off compared to what they are now. So if you are a fan of the Heartstopper graphic novels, I recommend picking it up anyway. Just have a little look if it's something you're interested in seeing what her drawings were like and things like that. And if you saw my reading vlog that I uploaded, that was my first reading vlog ever. It was a bit of a mess, but I uploaded it anyway. Um, I read The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. And I'd been, I randomly wanted to read this because um, I listened to a podcast by Book Recos. They're on Instagram as well. I'll link their Instagram in the description below. But I listened to their podcasts. And what, one of their first podcasts, it might have been the first one actually, I'm not sure. Um, I was working my way through all their podcasts. And... They were talking about Beth O'Leary's books and they said that this one was their favourite one so far. So I owned it already and I thought, okay, now I want to pick it up. So it's basically about um, a girl called Tiffy and a guy called Leon and she's looking for somewhere really cheap to stay. She's not got very much money and he is renting out his flat um, for a cheap price, but they have to share a bed. Like, they share the same bedroom and stuff, but he... Um, works nights and she works in the day so they never actually cross paths till eventually obviously they do meet at some point 
that's a given. Yeah, I thought this was really, really interesting. And they kind of communicate through post-it notes scattered around the flat, which I thought was quite cute. And I thought at parts it was quite funny. And I really like the main character. Um, I like the boy as well. And the side characters I really liked. So I did really enjoy this. It was a fun read and I gave it four out of five stars. I do recommend it if you want something kind of um, quick, a bit quirky, something a bit different um, than a standard kind of romance. And yeah, I enjoyed this. I also read Thrive by Krista and Becca Ritchie on my Kindle, which is the fourth book in the Addicted series. And I've only got one book left, which I am hoping to read in April. This one kind of covers the events in the books for um, first two books in the Calloway Sisters series, but from Lily and Lowe's point of view. I enjoyed this book because I absolutely adore the characters and it was interesting seeing things from their point of view and what has gone on on their side of the story. But at times I was a little bit bored, not bored, but like I just wanted to hurry things up a little bit just because I already knew the plot because it's what covers the events in the two books that I've already read. So it's a little bit repetitive, but I still did really, really enjoy it. I gave it four out of five stars. It wasn't quite five stars just because obviously I knew the plot. So it wasn't, there was nothing shocking or nothing like gripping really. It was just kind of a fun read. So I'm finally getting through them now because I'm hoping this year to finish the whole Addicted slash Calloway Sisters series. I think I've got four books left, so I am getting there. I also read on my Kindle The Curse of the Wolf King by Tessandra Odette. This is a fairy tale retelling series. Um, each book is based on a different character in the series and it's like a retelling of a different fairy tale. So the first one was Beauty and the Beast, which was really good. And they're all like in a fey world, so there's obviously a twist on it. There's some fey magic involved. Um, and obviously like fairies can't lie so that's a part of it and yeah there's like it's really really good i really enjoyed the retelling i do really like fairy tale fairy tale retellings but this this one was very different than other ones that i've read but i really really enjoyed it i gave this one four stars the books are on kindle unlimited and i'm currently actually reading the second book in the series which is the cinderella re cinderella retelling which i'm also really really enjoying so i feel like more people should read this series because i'm really enjoying it and it's just a bonus because it's on kindle unlimited so if you have kindle unlimited and you'd like a, a kind of fairy tale retelling or something that's just based on fae then definitely pick this up I also read The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. Um, I've read a couple of Christina Lauren's books in the past. I read um, In a Holidays, is that by Christina Lauren? Yeah, I read In a Holidays and also Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. And those books were both okay, but nothing special. But I did enjoy this one a lot more. So I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised on this one. I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. So this is basically about um, a guy who creates He's created this like dating app where you send off your DNA, a DNA sample, like a swab of your tongue or whatever, some spit or whatever, and they test you and they get, um, and you get matched based on your DNA. So it's like DNA matching and stuff. And you get like a percentage. So you could be like a 20% match or 30% match or whatever. And the two main characters, the main girl and the main guy, they match and they get like a 90 something percent match. So yeah, and there was like a, Loki, you're right in the camera. There was also a plot twist towards the end, which I was not expecting, because normally romance books don't really have plot twists as such. I mean, some of them do, but this one had a twist at the end that I wasn't expecting, so that was a nice, pleasant surprise. Kept the book interesting, and I fully enjoyed this, so definitely recommend, I recommend this one. And I also got a little bit more into audiobooks this month. So I downloaded an app called Libby, which you can link to your library card or your local library. And also there's another app called BorrowBox where you can borrow audiobooks from your local library as well. And they're both completely free. So you just sign up to your library and then you use your library card details to log into the app. And then you just get a selection of books you can like borrow. So it's kind of like you're borrowing a book. You only have like 21 days to use it and then you have to return it but it's all done online via the app and yeah I've been getting quite into this because I work from home most of the time I'm like an artist so I draw pet portraits and like paint customized pet items and things like that so I quite like listening to an audiobook while I work so it just keeps me more amused keeps me entertained so I listened to The Marriage Act by John Mars and I'd been wanting to read this because the concept sounded really interesting and when I saw it was on BorrowBox I thought right that's it that's my sign so it's basically about um it's set in the future so it has a few references to Covid pandemic and Brexit and things like that which I think happened 
10, 15, 20 years ago, something. It's set in the future anyway, um, which is quite interesting. It's basically where the government prioritise people who are married, and people who are married, they get more benefits, like NHS and things like that. They get more housing benefits. Um, so they they want people to get married, pretty much. And if you're part, you sign up to this marriage thing, I can't remember what it's called, marriage smart marriage that's it if you sign up to a smart marriage when you're married you also have to be um like people listen to your conversations so the government can see if you're actually like compatible as well and if you have marriage issue issues you have to be watched and you have people come and like give you therapy and stuff like that and you can like lose your smart marriage thing or something i don't know it's quite confusing but it's a really really interesting concept and it goes through um, some different characters stories but I, they don't really link that much so I think there was about five four or five different stories going on and it jumps from one to the other different points of views and I thought they were all going to kind of link together in the end or something but they didn't there was like subtle links in between them but mostly they were just completely separate stories I did find them very interesting but I did feel like towards the end I was getting slightly not bored I wouldn't find it boring it's just it was less interesting towards the end I kind of just find the concept itself really interesting but I did definitely enjoy it I ended up giving it three out of five stars also on Box, I listened to confessions of an alleged good girl which is by I can't remember who it's by now it's by Joya Joffney Goffney yeah I don't know I'll link all the book well I won't link the books I'll write all the books in the description that I've read in this video anyway this is about a family who is religious and they believe, well, at least the parents, they believe that you shouldn't have sex before marriage and that kind of thing. And then it's about a teenage girl who she wants to have sex before marriage. She tries and she can't. And it turns out, this isn't a spoiler because this is in the synopsis anyway, but it um, turns out she has a thing called vaginismus, which is actually a real life problem, which I didn't know anything about really. I'd heard of it before, but I didn't know much about it. And it was quite interesting, like learning more about it and like how people would overcome it. And it was just interesting seeing how the family dynamic changed because obviously things get found out and all sorts. It's got a bit of drama in there, but it was really, really good. I really enjoyed the characters. Um, her friends I really enjoyed. It was quite a feel-good book and I just really did enjoy the characters and it was something a bit different so I listened to that on audiobook as well and I really did enjoy the audiobook as well. The narrator narrated it really well as well so I gave that four out of five stars. I did read quite a few books, a couple of them were audio which does like boost my the amount that I read when you listen to audiobooks because you can do things obviously at the same time which is handy so yeah if you'd read if you've read any of these books please let me know what you thought of them I hope you enjoyed them if you have read any of them I didn't have really any disappointing reads this month apart from five survived by Holly Jackson so that was quite good I was quite pleased with my reading this month I'll be uploading my April TBR in a couple days time so please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see that so you don't miss it and I hopefully see you then Bye.